What is going on, Rob? And stop what you're doing because we have a lot of stuff to cover in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. So before I start, there was a massive live stream the other day that Bandai Namco put together. And in case you missed that, I will link that entire thing in the description below so you can check it out, the full hour's worth of uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse content. But today we're going to talk about specifically about the customization options that they revealed uh, in that stream. So without further ado, let's talk about everything that we, that we saw. So this is going to be kind of all over the place. It's just basically off my notes that I took while I was watching the stream. But uh, in the stream, they actually use a level 60 female uh, Saiyan character, which confirms that we can be at least level 60. But when the question came up is how high or how far we can level up, they said higher than 60. So at least 61 is actually what they said. But uh, most likely, I'm, I'm seeing maybe we can get the level 100 or something. But uh, it's definitely going to be at least 60. Uh, when they confirm the actual number there, you know, I'll let you know. But for now, just know that you can do quite a bit of leveling up in this game. Speaking of which, um, the mentor system is actually really, really cool. So originally we thought that when we start uh, the game, you choose a mentor, you stick with that mentor, you maybe switch a mentor, uh, you know, whatever, you just kind of go with it. You can actually not pick every single mentor to mentor you in the game. And uh, what, what they mentioned is, 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 uh, is you need certain levels basically to get trained by mentors. So that's a really, really cool thing in this game that uh, once you start leveling up, the stronger you get, the more mentors that become available. Because like if you want to get trained by, let's say, Beerus, for example, which I don't know if Beerus is a mentor, but let's say he is. Let's say if Beerus is a mentor, he'll probably be like, hey, you're way too weak. Go level up to like level 80 or something before you talk to me again. So that's actually really, really cool. It actually gives you a chance to really train with everybody and build the perfect character. So that actually has me really excited about that game. Now let's talk about actual customization stuff because this is kind of what everybody really wants to know about this game. It's like, how far can we customize the characters, Ram Cells? Let us know. Well, let's talk about Majin characters first because a lot of people want to know is can we be a skinny Majin Buu in the game for males? The answer is unfortunately no, which I kind of uh, guesstimated what happened because uh, I told you the reason why. In case you missed my Majin uh, race breakdown, I will also link that in the description below. But basically, you can only be a fat male Buu if you want to be a male character. If you want to be a skinny Majin Buu, you have to be female. Now, for the Majin characters, I will say that you can choose how slender you are. So you can actually kind of be a chubby Majin Buu because there is a uh, adjustment for choosing your size and height. So if you want to be like tall and slender and sort of just kind of chubby, you can do that with Majin characters, which isn't that big of a deal. Now, as far as transformations, they did not confirm what the transformations are for the Majin characters yet because most likely it wasn't built. But we'll probably get their reveal sometimes in the next couple weeks as we get closer to uh, February's uh, release date for this game. So I'll let you guys know as soon as I find out. But... Here's something really, really cool that I saw. As they were running around, and you'll probably see it if you watch the video, as they were running around through Toki Toki City, I saw a cooler character. Like, like not actually cooler character. I'm talking about like cool, like Freezes race, cooler. And he had the same face as cooler, and he was kind of essentially designed to be the, 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 the final form for cooler that we saw in the movie. So it actually, it's actually really, really cool to know that you can actually design your character that far ahead. So I'm starting to think that for the Freezes race, you don't, you don't just design your first form Frieza character and then you transform. I feel like you can actually choose uh, the alternate transformations as your actual permanent form as well. Now as far as transformations, my theory is that there's only going to be a final form in that game. But I feel like, you know, part of part of the advantage of being a Frieza race is you can already tr like basically choose that design for that character. Now, they didn't really go into detail on the, on the Frieza race yet, nor did they even reveal the name of it. I still think it's going to be the cold race, maybe the mutant race. We'll find out as the game is, uh, you know, as we get closer to the release date. But it's pretty cool to see that if you want to create essentially cooler and be cooler in the game, you can, because they definitely had that face option, uh, which you can see if you watch the trailer. It was like really, not the trailer, but the video. It was really, really fast. So if, I'm not really sure what the timestamp was. If you watch the whole thing, you'll just see at the point where they walk through the little area where they the items you'll see like a little cooler character just sitting on the ground and I thought that was really really cool now uh, as far as uh, clothing uh, a lot of people I want to know in the during the beta during the Japanese and English beta phase uh, is can does this clothing do anything and the answer is yes but not much wearing clothes slightly adjusts your stats so it uh, makes you uh, stronger more defensive etc like each item that you wear slightly affects your well not every every item but uh, most of the items I assume will slightly affect your stats so somehow. But now the thing is, is, is the answer is somehow. It doesn't do everything. Uh, it's just designed to just kind of give it that small boost in case you want to make that perfect character. So not only does it look cool, but it, it can also make a character overall perform better. Now, I don't know the details yet on everything, what every item does, but if you watch the trailer, if you keep calling the trailer, if you watch the video, you'll notice that uh, as, as they create a character, um, I guess the question comes up, you know, does it do anything? And the answer is yes. So we'll find out more as we get closer to the game. Which, by the way, I saw Beerus's clothes confirmed as one of the options of stuff that you can wear. So that's actually really, really cool. So you can essentially make your own version of a god. Now, the god race is not confirmed. Uh, there is no god race, nor is there a plan for a god race. Now, you're probably asking me why am I even talking about a quote-unquote god race. And that's because 
a lot of people have been asking if there's a god race in this game. I don't know where that came from, but the answer is no. But at least you can sort of probably recreate Beerus or make your own version of the god in the game and then wear their clothes. So that's actually pretty freaking cool. Now, as far as customization, um, each race it has pretty much every, every access to every single attack in the game. But certain attacks are only unique to certain races. So for example, Chocolate Beam is probably only unique to Mosh characters. Uh, Supernova is probably only unique to Freeze's character. So like, I don't know the details of what attacks are unique to what races yet, but they did mention that certain races have um, certain uh, attacks that are unique to just that race. So that's actually really, really cool. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is voices, because that's something that we didn't see in the beta. Every character, whether male or female, has at least 10 voices to choose from. So that's actually pretty cool, because at least we have a good option. Whereas last time in Ultimate Takeshi, there were like, absolutely no voices to really choose from. So it's actually cool to see that we got a pretty big, unique... Uh, uh, variety of voices that we can pick to pick from when we choose our character uh, as far as attacks now the question came up is what attacks are going to be in the game and they said just consider all your favorite attacks in the game and when I was watching the, uh, the attacks that they were scrolling through I saw stuff like 10 times Kamehameha I saw Big Bang Kamehameha I saw pretty much every attack from Dragon Ball all the way to Dragon Ball GT so there's pretty much every single attack in the entire Dragon Ball universe in this game um, it was what like 200 attacks 200 attacks and over 450 clothing items that you can equip for your character so it's pretty much the most customizable DBS game that will uh, probably ever get ever so you should be excited about that now the final thing that I want to cover is well two things number one the question of course came up is how many characters are there in the game outside of your custom characters and um, of course they can't reveal it but they did tell us as of right now there's at least 70 so uh, there's at least 70 confirmed for now in the current build that they were showing off there's at least 70 that we can play with and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the greatest roster ever and the only reason why is because on the roster of the video what I noticed was they had a pool as a freezer soldier but they also had the human freezer soldier as well so the fact that we got two versions of freezer soldiers in the game tells me that they're pretty much going to build out a pretty massive roster in this game and the fact that you know we already saw Dragon Ball GT characters inside the um, uh, the data mine uh, files that Sergio mined a couple months ago, and we also saw that you know Jacko the Galactic Patrolman is in the game as well. So they're probably going to give us a pretty massive roster, to which I still believe we're going to get over 120 characters in the final version of this game. Now, of course, when they confirm how big the game is, I will let you guys know. But for now, just know that there's at least 70 confirmed for right now. So that's pretty freaking exciting. Now, the last thing I want to talk about. The last thing, and this excites me so much, and it's funny because I have a video going up tomorrow about uh, me wanting this, is weapons. Weapons are confirmed, folks. We can actually play with weapons in the game. Oh my god, so exciting. But here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Before you, you know, freak out and think, oh my god, I can play with a sword. So, they're not going to be tied to our melee attacks, which kind of sucks to hear. Uh, if you play as trunks, if you play as time patrol trunks or future trunks, you can actually use the sword uh, as a regular version of attacks, like you've seen in the previous DBZ games. But for your character, um, if your clothing that you have has a, a weapon equipped to it, like a sword or something, it's part of a special attack, really. So it's not like you know you can you know press square, square, square for basic punches and they start pulling out the sword. It's more of like if you, for example, maybe press triangle and like do like a charge attack, they'll pull a the sword out. So certain attacks will feature the items and weapons that your character has equipped in the game. So that's pretty exciting. Oh yeah, and also one more thing before I forget, before I forget. Uh, and also before I also keep going, before I wow the ADD is good right now. Uh, what weapons are in the game? I don't know yet. We'll probably get better confirmation as we get closer to the release date. But just know that swords and weapons are actually going to be in the game. And I'm pretty excited! Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how customizations actually work in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. So, remember I told you guys that uh, there's obviously different like versions of characters you know in the DBZ history so for example you got Scout of Vegeta you got Namek Vegeta you got you know Maj Vegeta you got a bunch of Vegeta to essentially pick from well when you go through character select screen which we've seen in the live stream uh, you can actually choose which version and which costume you have and also each version also has unique attacks uh, that are tied to that character and also aside that if you press uh, square I believe if you press square it just so shows the skill I don't think you can edit them yet well, at least in a version of that you couldn't edit it yet but if you press square, it does bring up the attacks that you can see that the characters have. So you can actually cycle through which characters you want and basically stick to that character you want. So for example, if you want to play as uh, Cell Saga Vegeta, you can do that. If you want to play as just uh, Scout of Vegeta, you can do that as well. So you can actually go through the different vari variations of characters and costumes available in the game. And that thing is pretty freaking cool. Um, again, I don't know if you can actually edit the attacks like you saw in previous DBZ games where it's like you can press, you know, square and then sh like in Raging Blast for example, you can choose which attacks you want to equip to them, but you can definitely choose different versions of characters, so that's pretty awesome to see. 
Uh, I think that covers pretty much everything. Let me just go through my list one last time. But, by the way, I also saw Captain Ginyu as one of the mentors. So I'm, I still have a theory that there's going to be a huge list of mentors, especially since they're based on how, how strong you are. So I'm sure that, you know, they can't just have, you know, the basic people. It's like Goku, Gohan, Vegeta. Like, if they're going to have a level base where, like, you have to get stronger before you can, like, you know, get taught by a mentor, I'm pretty sure it's going to have a pretty massive list of mentors in the game. Now, again, when they confirm who's all in it, I will let you guys know. But as he was running through Toki Toki City, I saw uh, Ginyu, I saw Piccolo, we saw Frieza, Goku, Vegeta, the basics. Uh, and, you know... We'll see, you know, we'll see as more details comes out. Who wants to get trained by Yamcha or a pool? This guy. No, I probably don't want to do that. But uh, that kind of covers all the basics about, uh, whatchamacallit, about uh, customization. Um, again, if you want to watch this, you know, video yourself, you can uh, watch the hour-long stream. I'm going to link it in the description below. And, of course, if you want to see my theory on the Majin Race, I will also link that in the description below. I was pretty spot on, actually. In a couple weeks, I'll probably do a full breakdown of each race as well, based on what I saw in the stream. Because, actually, the stream did reveal some information about uh, character attributes for each race as well. Uh, except for, I don't think Freezes was revealed. But uh, it did show us a little bit, so it actually is going to be enough information to be able to break down how each race is actually going to work as well. So, I'll put that up sometime in the next uh, couple days or something. But, for now... Whoa, excuse me. For now, that is everything that you want to know about in terms of customization that I remember, I hope. If I forgot something, I'll make another video. Uh, but for now, like I said, just sit through, watch the whole stream. I will link it in the description below, and we'll just take it from there. So, yeah. I hope you find this video helpful. If you did, make sure you punch that like button right in the balls. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything, let me know in the comment section below. And I got to tell you this right now, guys. Let me tell you something right now. Before I end this video, you know, I was already really excited about this game. And I, was in, I went into the mentality that this is going to be the best Dragon Ball Z game of all time before I started a stream but after I watched that stream I was truly truly excited times times a thousand I was I'm so hyped about this game and I I can't like I can't even stress my excitement enough because you can probably just tell in my voice that I'm like I, I don't know how to express it and uh, all I want to say is 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 I just can't wait <laughs> I can't wait to fight each one of you guys I can't wait for uh, this game to come out because it's not going to be just awesome for us but it's also going to be awesome for the Dragon Ball Z culture overall because this community is awesome the, the culture is awesome, and, and I love the fact that we have something this amazing that's going to be part of the culture that's being made just for us. So we got to thank both Dimps and Bino Namco for really giving us exactly what we wanted in this band. And also big shout out to Treebacks because part of me thinks that, you know, the, the Dragon Ball Raging Blast 3 project he put together uh, was so amazing that it helped sort of influence what we got in this game. So big shout out to him as well. Uh, and and yeah, so yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts Like I want to hear everything you guys have to say so let me know in the comments below and we'll just take it from there So yeah, anyways guys enjoy the rest of today, and I will see all you awesome super Saiyans in the comment section below. Bye